te pegan aquí. Y ah. eso evita que puedas levantar el brazo. everybody and welcome to the WBC Talks. Stay home, stay safe. We hope you're having a wonderful time with us. Uh, this is round 11 and this is a very, very important round. The topic today is going to be mental well-being during this crazy time. And of course, it's a crazy time, but I hope you're having a wonderful time at home listening to all the experts that we've been having in our panels. Today is not different. It's going to be really, really interesting to learn how to handle our own minds. I want to introduce Sochil. She's the director for the WBC University. Sochil, welcome. Hi, Victor. Thank you very much. It's very nice to share this panel with all these experts we have from the Department of Psychology, from the WBC University, from the Ibero-American Society of Psychology. Uh, we're going to have uh, with us here today uh, Joaquin Dosil, who is the director of the Faculty of Sports from Liber Quare, uh, Javier Rodriguez from Spain, he is in Vigo right now, Spain, Dr. Silverman, who is a neurologist and a psychologist, a sports psychologist, he's in Arizona, Mayra Moreno, who is Mexican, but she's right now in California, in Santiago Rivera. Uh, at the Liber Quare University, as you know, We are commitment to educate uh, on the skills of, of the on the professional skills from the boxing community for judges, referees, trainers, nutritionists uh, to put uh, the skills. But also, uh, we are working very hard on train the spirit and train the mind of the sports community. It's very important to, mostly in these times, to do that. And like Mauricio said before, today uh, we are in round 11, but these talks from the WBC has been a blessing for many people, for many people around the world. We are sharing the same moment. It doesn't matter where we are, we're all sharing the same circumstance. So I know Mauricio already joined us, so I will like to give him the, the word. Welcome, Mauricio. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Sochil, thank you for Liber Quare, the WC University. Uh, I am extremely excited about this panel of today because mental health is without a doubt the most important uh, topic that we need to address. There's a lot of lack of knowledge. Uh, very few uh, have the opportunity to learn that it is us, it is each individual who can control uh, your brain and the brain is the one that controls your emotions. I have been learning through you, through the experts, Joaquin, our, our leader, uh, how important it is to manage your brain. Uh, today, uh, during the presentations, I'm sure we will address the most important ones. But uh, basically, what I have been blessed to learn through this process are very simple matters, which are uh, to wake up and to understand that you have a job to do write down exactly what it is that you want to accomplish during the day, divide your tasks into work, into pleasure, into family, into exercise, into mental health. Um, it's so important to differentiate the day from the weekend, weekdays and weekend. Uh, that has been very helpful uh, also to properly hydrate, to eat 
a balanced uh, diet to exercise both the body and the brain. And uh, I'm just very thankful, Joaquin. I'm sure this is going to be very entertaining, very illustrative. And uh, I cannot thank you enough for this presence, all of you. This is a great panel, and I'm very much looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mauricio. Welcome to all the participants in this panel. And congratulations to the WBC for these WBC talks. It's very important in this moment, in the, this, this kind of initiative. Um, for us, it's very important to introduce the sports psychology in the talks. Regarding the, the real situation, the, the actual situation, there are many things to, to talk, but the key word is the adaptation. It's very important, the adaptation to all the people. The adaptation is assimilate the situation, um, accept the situation, and uh, feeling well in this situation. And all the, the, the speakers will be um, speak about the relationship into between multi states, uh, the positive thoughts, um, and other things that are important in this in this moment. <clears throat> I, I would like to introduce my colleagues. Um, Santiago Rivera is from Colombia, but his master degree, master sports psychology, master degree in Spain, and he is living in Sevilla from. 12 years old, I think. And Santiago has experience in football, in soccer, um, with the children, with the coaches, and in the elite, with uh, several football players along the, the world. Uh, Santiago, the, the first question is for you. What is, in this moment, is possible to, to, to see with optimists the what is happening in the world and especially in the sport or is impossible yeah, okay first of all uh, thank you Joaquin for your presentation and thank uh, to the organization for for the uh, inviting me to, to participate in today's uh, virtual meeting um, yes for sure uh, it's possible to keep motivated in a situation like this one uh, this all happened uh, suddenly. We didn't expect it. It's very, it, it has been stressful, uh, mainly at the beginning. And uh, when people get stressed, they, they just focus on, on how to solve a problem. And uh, confination at home uh, has no solution. The only solution is to accept it and to adapt to it. As uh, Joaquin said, it, adaptation is one of the main um, and, or the core uh, resources that we all need to develop uh, in the present. So keep it motiva uh, motivated uh, to develop uh, an optimistic style uh, in order to face uh, the present situation uh, is very important because uh, being uh, optimist optimistic um, helps athletes to keep uh, confident, they motivate more, they focus on what they can do, and they ident identify, and this is something very important, is to identify uh, the risk situations. The risky situation right now is that uh, athletes have to train at home, and they, are, they usually don't do it. They do it with the company or of their uh, partners and their coaches. So, so to uh, identify risky situations is very important and to understand that this is a, a transitory uh, experience. It, it won't be like this all the time. So we have to be patient um, and be flexible. Uh, it's also very important. Uh, and my partners today, uh, for sure also um, uh, reinforce these, this idea, which is a, it's a core idea in, a, in, in, this, in this present, which is 
not easy, it's not comfortable, but we can face it and we can keep going on. Santiago, I'm sorry to interrupt. We have a fighter, Jose Carlos Ramirez. He's supposed to fight Victor Postol, February 2nd in China. Obviously it was canceled. It was the first big uh, fight canceled. And then he was reprogrammed to fight in California on May 2nd, May, May 5th, something like that. Uh, and it was also canceled. What would you recommend to a pro fighter that it's been waiting for this big fight, making that money, training, getting physically and mentally ready, and he just has to stop a few weeks. Even the first fight was canceled a week before the fight. How can he handle that and not get depressed? It's a hard uh, challenge to face, but it's not impossible to face, okay? Life is not easy. I would, I would say, say to him, look, you should to, you, you choose to become a professional boxer. The, this is not easy. This is not the easy way. You could have been, uh, become a waiter and uh, you would just go work and ask for the money you get, but you prefer to become a professional athlete. This is very difficult. This is not the easy way to get money in life. Okay, so first of all, get responsible of your decision. Stop complaining. Victor, it's a good question for Mayra. Mayra Moreno is, is working with young, young child, children. But uh, one question is the feelings regarding when you, uh, when the, the, when canceled or postponed an important event and uh, I was training a lot. Uh, Mayra, what is your feeling about it? Um, well, it's very important. Hi, hi to everyone, first of all. It's very important um, to address these feelings uh, because it is important first to acknowledge that it is going to be frustrating because indeed you have been working for a long time. Um, everything in your life changed preparing for this match or championship. You changed your eating habits. You maybe, you know, lost touch with family members. You were training a lot. You did all of these different kinds of things. So having that life halted suddenly stopped everything that you were planning it does feel um like grief like frustration like anger so first of all it is important in my opinion to acknowledge those feelings um to give yourself a little bit of um like uh, what's it called like an eight count right like you're okay these eight seconds for you to see if you're okay and then continue fighting and this is one way that you can um, address it as continue your life yes the pandemic is real it's happening it seems unbelievable like a movie but it is here so that doesn't mean that your life necessarily changes completely right it is as if you have um, encountered a wall but this wall is really a step so it feels like a wall because you cannot walk but really it just means you need to make a different extra effort and you were uh, you will become in a higher state if you will so you can continue doing this and practicing and preparing for the championship It's just going to be in a different way. You can gather your family um, for that fighter. Let's say his uh, match was postponed to May 5th or May 2nd. Well, you can still have that match May 5th or whatever the date was um, in your living room with your family. If you're in quarantine with your family, you can get your kids to grab some popcorn. You can grab the punching bag or whatever um, equipment you use to practice. And you can just have the fight. You can make it a fun event in a way you can live stream it like we're live streaming it right now. doesn't necessarily mean that that life is over. It just means that maybe it will become a different thing. But trying to ignore it or put it um, away completely can lead to more stress added. And you don't want to be living with extra stress when we're living in complete, you know, uh, uncertainty. So just my advice would be to, first of all, acknowledge them. Give yourself a little bit of time to be like, okay, yes, this is happening. Yes, I did practice, but this doesn't mean that it's over. My life will continue after the quarantine, so I better not ignore it and just um, continue working as if it's going to happen. Do it in a fun way, make it a family activity with your friends, just continue doing this so you can um, come back even stronger. I, I love that idea because instead, usually what people do is 
oh, today I will be fighting. Instead, I'm here in the living room with the kids. It, you can stay keeping the, the, the same date, but make that a funny date, a fun date with your family, something you still have the deadline, you, yeah. you still have that day, but enjoying the day instead of suffering. Yeah, and that way you can, because um, it, it feels in a way like, oh, my life pre-pandemic or my life before and now, who am I? The past was certain, but now I don't know. It feels like muddy waters. No, it is actually happening, but that doesn't mean that you no longer exist. You the boxer, you the athlete, maybe you had a half marathon, maybe you were training, you know, for a triathlon, whatever you were training for, you can still find an interesting way to do it. You can include family members that maybe were rooting for you because indeed all these athletes prepared, they had certain diets. It wasn't just like, oh, I was running or I was doing this, like their whole lives changed. So now having that completely stopped for something that is out of your control can be very stressful. We just need to find a different way to keep doing it and to um, just fulfill it. Victor, uh, another question for Javier Rodriguez. Javier Rodriguez is a sports psychologist master degree and he's working with me together in the Celta de Vigo in the northwest of Spain here in Galicia. And Javier, what, what kind of emotions can we usually feel when we are under the under in home, when, when you are in home and during one month or two months? What is the feeling and what um, kind of uh, strategies are important? Okay, Joaquin, thank you for the presentation. Hi, everybody. And first of all, just uh, say thank you uh, to allow us to be part of this kind of talks. We are uh, very proud to be uh, part of this kind of uh, talks. And it's, it's, it's an honor to be here for us because we think it's something very, very useful for, for everybody. Uh, regarding the question I'm just uh, Joaquin just said to me, uh, to answer this question, I would like to, to take all of you to this moment in the morning, especially this kind of people who is living in these countries who have been now for a long time in quarantine. And I would like to take all of you to this moment in the morning when you are waking up, lying in your bed, and I would like to make you a question. Have you ever felt during this time this kind of feeling like you cannot believe what is happening outside? I'm pretty sure that most of us are having this kind of feelings during this time we are going through. But uh, what does it mean? It means that the normal feelings that we are feeling right now is this kind of uh, thoughts or the, this kind of ideas, like related with the frustration, related with the incompression, and related with the uncertainty. So uh, related with this, I would like to say that, first of all, it's important that we shouldn't worry about having this kind of uh, feelings because we have to accept this kind of feelings because they are normal at the moment where we are living, and we have to accept it. We have to live with it. So it's not a problem to have it. The problem is that when we are having this kind of uh, feelings or this kind of thoughts, probably one uh, very frequent reaction is that we are going to try to uh, look for explanations. We're going to start making questions like, why is this happening? Or why do we have to believe in this? Because we don't know what it, why this is happening. And we cannot uh, in any way accept what is happening. The problem is that when we are st starting uh, to make these kind of questions, maybe our first reaction is taking our mobile phones or going to the TV and turn on the TV looking for information. And we're going to start trying to look for information outside. And one of the problems in this kind of situation is that we have not to look for information outside. What we have to do is try to look for information inside us. Because in my opinion, one of the uh, most important ideas in this kind of situation is that we don't have to focus on trying to, to guess or trying to find out how many days we have left till the day this finish. What we have to focus on is trying to find out a new way to live, living the present and adapting to the situation you are, we are living right now. And for this, what I recommend is trying to change this kind of feelings that we have, trying to change the question that we are doing. We are feeling now uncertainty, frustration, and we are feeling these kind of things. And one of the reasons because we are feeling this is because we are asking questions starting for why. We have to change this kind of question for another question starting for the word for what, or how can, I mean, we can do questions to ourselves like, for what can I use this time? Or how can I be able to spend all this time that I have at home? Uh, in this way, we're gonna be able to find out much more useful answers to these kind of questions. And this is gonna make us to be reforces in a situation like this. 
Thank you very much for okay, your- I have a question here from someone. Uh, he says, uh, we've been doing following a schedule with my kids, but uh, this is Holy Week. Usually Holy Week, it's like vacation or you have, uh, you're free. Should I keep the schedule? How should I celebrate? How, uh, what should I do with my kids at home? this week especially. Okay, Mayra. Sí, Joaquín. Yes. <laughs> I, that is a, a good question for you because the relationship because the parents and with the child. And especially in this holy week, it should be vacation or should be uh, following uh, the religion. But people is asking if they should follow the schedule or should celebrate in any way that you recommend. What would you recommend to do during this Holy Week? Um, yes. Well, it is important that we always follow schedules with kids, um, especially because everything in their lives, like imagine the anxiety we feel and we understand what's happening. So they feel the same anxiety, but they don't fully understand what's happening. So that is an added stress. That is why routines and schedules are very important at this time that they get up early, just like they would uh, going to school, that they eat at their times, that they keep eating healthy, that they drink water, all of these um, things that we've talked about. But you, you put up a, a very important point, it is vacation. So maybe the routine or the schedule can change a little bit in the sense that maybe they're not doing homework, they're not doing any school work. If you are working, Um, try to schedule a time that you can spend with them just as if you would um, if you if they were on vacation if you're not working maybe you can do certain activities if you have a backyard you can do all these um, different things because they are um, you're experiencing all these changes and for example my daughter the other day she's almost three and I put her to bed she usually goes to sleep right away but then I heard her from the living room that she was um talking so I went inside and I asked her um what are you talking about and she says and this is uh very impressive she says oh I'm just talking to my friends her stuffed animals about how everything is closed and we can't go out right now so she's almost three and right before she goes to bed she's just thinking about how everything is closed because her whole life changed we were out on the parks every day things like that so where I'm going to this Uh, where I'm trying to get to this is they are feeling something. So the best way that we can explain to them in their words is very, very important. The truth will always um, be better, right? So sit down, explain to them what's going on, but not only give them information, just also give them the opportunity to know what is going to happen instead of, just like we do with ourselves. And even verbalizing it and saying it out loud can help you understand it and feel better as well. Like, okay, this is happening, but, or... We can still do, like um, uh, like you guys were saying, what for, right? But what is this going to help us? This is going to change. Because in Mexico, particularly, as you were talking, the Holy Week is a very important week where we go out, we visit family, we're on the beach, all of these things. So that can't happen, but we can uh, change that routine, if you will, the Holy Week routine um, into something else. So just give them ideas, or if you don't know what to say, just ask them. How do you feel? What do you think? What do you want to do? What should we do? Okay, so yes, keep a schedule in a sense that you don't go too crazy where it's too hard to come back to the regular routine. Maybe they're not doing school, but you can also include them in planning and seeing what you guys can do. Any other question, Victor? Okay. We don't have any at the moment. Yeah. Okay, continuous. Well, nobody was prepared for this situation and we need to implement new strategies in our life, in our sport specifically, in boxing. Mm, the motivation of the of the boxer during the quarantine is fluctuate, is fluctuate. It is uh, different in every day. The mood stays changes. 
And we, we have uh, different strategies from the sports psychology to, to try to establish this uh, mood state and the, and the motivation. Uh, Santiago or Javier, what kind of strategies are appropriate for this boxer during the quarantine? Okay, I don't know if Santiago want to ask her, or if not, they can say something and maybe then Santiago can continue. Yeah, yeah yes. you start, Javier, it's okay. Yes, okay, uh, talking about this kind of things that you are asking about, again, okay, talking about the strategies, uh, I would say that the strategies I would like to talk about uh, are something that it could be useful for the boxers, but also for the rest of the people that maybe now is listening to us. Uh, I think one of the most important things nowadays is time to have uh, a daily routine, focus on our goals and our uh, resources and all and our tasks that we have to do. Uh, especially in boxers, maybe they have to, to follow any routine related with the, with the training, but maybe nowadays they cannot go to a gym, of course, because they have to be in a quarantine, but they can continue with the training session at home. But the problem is that maybe with this training session, they cannot uh, fill all the hours of the day. So they are going to spend time that they don't know what they have to do. So for this, what I recommend is, is trying to divide the, the goals that they have during this time in a small goals, like trying to, to divide these kinds of resources and try to use the, the achievements that they have, but in a small goals, trying to feel every day and try to get, uh, to get every day something to do. Because I think it's very important during this time, uh, don't spend a lot of time just waste, wasting our day, don't spend a lot of time just doing nothing. So a very good strategy is try to divide the objectives that they used to have before when they were maybe preparing any kind of uh, competition, but now maybe they are gonna have to divide in small goals because they don't really know when they are gonna come back. They don't really know when they are gonna have the next competition or they don't really know when they are gonna have to fight again. It could be a very good strategy. No, don't, not thinking in the future, but thinking in the present, day by day, trying to get any goal. Maybe one day you can uh, look for a resistance uh, training session, the other day another kind of training session, but trying to find out any goal for every day. And then let's see what happens, but let's focus on the on the present. OK. Yeah, we want to continue. OK, yeah. Uh, well, in, uh, um, concerning the, uh, the objectives, the, the topic of objectives, which is uh, it's quite complex. It has uh, some legs. And uh, Javier explained very well one of its legs, which is uh, um, establishing a smaller and shorter, maybe achievable um, goals. Um, but also sometimes, I think, uh, and boxing is a sport which being strong like strength is very important. It's also a kind of macho uh, sport. Okay? So the stronger, the toughest person, the toughest character uh, will probably have more chances to success. And this means mm, there is a, like a self-demanding, it's, it's very high. There's a, there's a high self-demanding and there's also an environment self-demanding from the coach and probably from the family okay, and its parents. So um, being now in this situation, which is an atypic situation, okay, a stressful situation for, um, for boxers who, who they seek for high performance, um, being flexible with, uh, with uh, goals is very important because they are not training in a regular uh, condition, okay? So that's why they need, we need, the coach needs to adapt and to be flexible and maybe be a less demanding. This is one very important thing about establishing um, objectives. There's another, and uh, parents and coaches, they should uh, question themselves if they are um, putting uh, the, <laughs> the uh, being like putting on the very much pressure the boxer because maybe they they don't are, are not helping and another and this is another important point is that if they want uh, the coach wants the boxers to keep motivated he should try to focus on their strengths because if like, enhancing 
um, my negatives. It's much more demanding from a motivational point of view, and it's a lot much more of effort, attention, time, and it's, that would be very hard to to improve if, if I'm uh, training alone by myself. So focus on strengths, on the talent, on, on, on the positives. If it's possible, of course, this is a methodology also. The methodology is very important in this, in this, in this issue. Let me explain a little uh, about what a fighter does. A, a professional fighter is used to being quarantined, but he has the, the team, but not the family. And, and he has a deadline and he, he focuses in just one thing, get ready for the fight. He study videos, he forgets about family, he, uh, he's concentrated in getting shape and get all the techniques he requires for the fight. But at this moment, they, are, they don't need to make an extra effort to get ready they are in quarantine, but with the family, that is two, two different worlds together. And as uh, El Alacran Berchel said, I have a lot of energy that needs to be burned because I feel like uh, I'm like a lion in a, in a cage. So he doesn't know if he should train harder. Uh, he doesn't have the trainer there right next to him telling, eh, stay calm you have to relax and they come and train. So it's a confusing time for them because they have the mix of two different worlds and, and too much energy. What should they do? Yeah, it's very important, the routines during the day, the schedule with all the, the things that you, you will do. And for, for the reason, you, the thoughts um, should be only in the present, only in the day, not in the future, not in the past, and leave the present, no leave the past, no leave the, the future, leave the present and organize your day with all the schedule very, very completed with the physical training, with uh, reading, uh, play with the family or with the, with the friends, uh, with the net. Um, but it's very important that the, the, the adaptation to this situation is a new situation and we need to, um, to try to, to get the, the things that are important for you important in your, your day and pass the day uh, with the focus on the opportunity of these days. And I, I understand that the bosser need to burn energy. I understand. But uh, in the schedule, the bosser can uh, put two or three moments to burn with the training, with, uh, with the dancing, or another other thing, another thing that uh, is is good for burn the, the energy, for example. The wife will love that. Instead of training, dancing would be good. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say hi to Michael Nikwaye uh, from Ghana. He's watching us, and he wants uh, to receive a hi from everybody. So, thank you, uh, Mr. Nikwaye, for watching us. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, thank you, Joaquin. Can I say something? Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, okay, this uh, uh, boxer, Alakran, he wants to keep in shape okay? because he, he do not really know when we will have to fight, but we will eventually have to fight. Okay. So um, he's not used to spend so, um, such a long period of time at home, being a family man and being a professional boxer. So this is also a stressful situation. Okay? <laughs> uh, in this means, he'll probably need uh, some um, couple and uh, parenting counseling. Uh, how, and 
some training on how to manage uh, family conflicts, which is normal because no one is used to spend so much time with their couple and with their kids and keep working. Okay, so this is an environmental um, variable which has to be uh, controlled in some way. That's it. Joaquin, Victor, can I say something? I like it. Yes. Uh, Victor, uh, regarding the situation you talked before about the, the fighter that you said that uh, this fighter uh, has a lot of uh, energy to burn, I would like to, to tell you, if you allow me, uh, a small recommendation that we are doing with the full team I'm working with. Uh, now, of course, the full players as well, they have as well a lot of uh, burn to energy to burn and they want to play every, every weekend. Now they cannot do. Uh, what we are doing right now is trying to, to simulate uh, uh, the week and the weekend. So we're trying to make like a simulation of the of the week, trying to uh, send them a small playing sessions, uh, similar, obviously with a small difference because we are not on the pitch, but similar that the ones that we used to do before in the past in the pitch. And then what we are also doing is trying to play them some videos related with the, the, the team uh, we are supposed to play this week if we were in a normal moment. So I could recommend to these kind of fighters that maybe they can do something like this, something like try to burn this energy focusing on the uh, supposed uh, fat fight that they will have on the weekend. Of course, they are not going to have, it's not the same, but it's a way to refocus it in as, like something like a deadline, like uh, trying to watch videos related with the, the other fighter or something like this. In this way, they are going to continue joining to this kind of competition, but in a different way. It's something that we are doing right now and it's working pretty good with our uh, football players because they continue to focus on the Suppose it a schedule that we were supposed to have if we were in the competition. So it could be something useful to burn this energy, but simulating the, the, the competition. Yeah, I like the idea. You get you get stressed but under control. Just as the idea, just to keep our stress under control, but not it's, it's not the same deadline, but it's a, it's like a deadline, like trying to to focus every week and every weekend, like if we were having the match that we were supposed to have during the competition. And the fighter can do the same, but talking about uh, another fighter, watching videos from this fighter, trying to get move movements, trying to get attacks, defense, this kind of things could be something useful. Thanks, Javier. Yeah, yeah. it's very important to management, the stress management, the situation. And some, some bossers have a big, big houses, another boxer have a, a small houses, and it's important to have clear space to space to work, clear space to to be with the family, with uh, to rest. It's very important to to this situation in in home. To distinguish one is for work, one is for for stay and rest, and managing the stress and the all the situations with the space in in home. What I've been doing at home, I have two kids, 11 and 13. And of course, mm -hmm. my wife is here and she's working also. One of the first things that I face is I, I was working and they were next to me. Watch this. Uh, I'm doing this. Look, let's go and play. And yeah. what we did is to have schedule for everyone. The idea is to have at the same time that I'm working, he's doing homework or reading or something that he has to tell me about. Yeah. I knew uh, something from him, and at this moment, we we get our own time working, and then we get together for for lunch, and then we can talk, and then we can share. But then we have to work again, so that's what I've been doing, and it's really working for me. See, sí. yeah, Victor, is is a good opportunity. This situation is a good opportunity to educate to our children because the valors, the Mayra uh, speak about the valors, the, the, the physical aspect, social circles that are important in this moment. Mayra, if you can answer. Um, yes, well, uh, first of all, an activity, speaking to what everyone was talking to, that you can do, um, when you have all these doubts, when you are like, okay, what do I do now? I have all this energy is to just 
um, sit down and write down everything that is um, valuable to you or that you feel that makes you who you are, athlete or no athlete. It's very important because sometimes when we are alone with our thoughts, with family or no family, um, we start thinking a lot. We overthink. And we start thinking about things that maybe are troubling us. And then what used to be our distractors, like our phones and social media, are now flooded with uh, messages that are giving us even more anxiety. So one way to remember who we are and to have um, all of these routines and remember all of these things is to just sit down. Whenever you feel like you are being overwhelmed with information, just sit down, take a very, very deep breath, uh, give yourself five, 10 minutes to just breathe and be in contact with yourself you can write down what is important to you what do you want to focus on who are you who what makes you um, and then that way with all of this talk about schedules we can incorporate this that is important to me into my schedule because suddenly we find ourselves you know it's monday i didn't take a shower it's tuesday i ate a bag of chips for breakfast wednesday i didn't talk to anyone because i was feeling you know when a funk so this can happen to you, to everyone, again, boxer or no boxer, because days st suddenly start to become a blur. You don't have that um, urgency, oh, I have to go out to work and I have to do this. Nothing else is distracting you. And again, what used to distract you is actually giving you more anxiety now. So a way that you can incorporate this and to remember, sort of like to build a bridge between um, yourself and who you are right now, or who you were in the sense in who you want to still be is to just write down and incorporate it into my schedule if you really like to read then add it to your schedule on two things i'm going to read if you really like to dance like joaquin was saying um you can incorporate it into your schedule but it's very it is very important that you acknowledge this and that you remember it writing it down always makes it more real so just sit down write a, a list um with my family with boxing with my social circles with my health with my hygiene, just make like a little checklist of things that you want to keep doing. So it doesn't uh, end up being like, oh, it's Sunday again. And I didn't do this and I didn't do that. Because then there's this like a uh, two sided thing where you suddenly feel the pressure where, oh, this is the perfect time. I can do this. I can do all of the, all of the things that I never did. And you see all these, you know, posts about the perfect parents that are doing all of these activities with your kids. And you feel suddenly overwhelmed or with the pressure that you have to be perfect, that you have to perfectly use this time that you're giving this opportunity and then that becomes pressure. And then on the other side, you feel very sad because your life changed, you're not who you were before and then you don't wanna do anything. So you have to find a way to remember who you are and what is important to you so you can include it every day. And again, days don't go by and you didn't do what makes you feel yourself. It could be a lot of different things. Um, okay. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mayra. Uh, so chill, if you like to, to do a reflection or introduce the, the new member of this panel, uh, Dr. Silverman. Yeah, so chill, please. I, I didn't know he was here, but of course, welcome to Dr. Silverman. Uh, it's very nice. He's in Arizona. And before giving the word to him, I just want to comment that we don't have to forget that boxers, trainers, we all are part of a family. We cannot forget that right now, uh, for this circumstance, we have to be confined in our home, at our home with our family. And it's nothing wrong. I'm, I'm not an expert. I'm not a psychologist, but I've been following these panels and we've been sharing these talks with many, many people all over the, the world. And I think it's very important uh, that is nothing wrong to detect that you are in a bad mood, that you are not well that day. And here in this panel, the, the most important thing that we have listened is to be able to detect that one mom, that a moment like that is happening. And in the panel in Spanish, we listen to a few recommendations and I like a couple of them. And I will uh, repeat a little bit what Arturo Velasco said, he says, if you have a bad moment and you detect that, take a minute, take a minute and reset your mind. Take a minute and breathe. 
take a minute and visualize and encapsulate that bad thought and put it away only by breathing for one minute, visualizing that uh, bad mood that you are in, put it in a way is very, very powerful. Then also one of the other panelists uh, share without that is nothing wrong with recognize your feeling. It's nothing, nothing wrong. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, in a bad mood today, but you can have a weapon every day. And that weapon can be, uh, for example, a phrase, a word that you are going to define at the beginning of your day that is going to be your companion, okay? I'm going to be happy today because I decide that I'm going to be happy. I'm going to treat well my children. Okay, I'm going to have a schedule. I'm going to read this book. I'm going to take a rest. I'm going to take, I'm going to do a workout. Something, something to do. But uh, what I recall is the positive talk that is going to be my companion that day. And of course I share what you say, Joaquin. We are light if we decide to be light. And we are darkness if we decide to be darkness. Okay, I think we have the power with us uh, to be light at our homes. We have no choice. We have to be at home. This is a reality that is happening all around the world. We all are in the same situation. If you are an athlete, if you are a trainer, if you are a boxer, a football, uh, whatever, a teacher, a mom, a dad, we are all having and going through through the same. So it's very important to detect our feelings and to define a, what, how do we want to live during this quarantine. I'm very happy to be sharing with the experts. You guys have the, are the expert. I'm learning a lot from you. And well, with this, just a small thought, because it's more colloquial, you know? I speak like, I'm not an expert, but I think I've been, achieved, uh, I've been achieving a lot from you guys. And I just want to put it in simple words, simple words that we all understand. And now I give the welcome to Dr. Silverman. Thank you, doctor, and welcome to Thank the you. Panel. Thank you. Um, interesting, I came in a little late. Um, but anyway, so it all makes sense what you're saying, and they, it really is difficult times. And I think when we have further problems is that when we can get anxiety about anxiety. And if we don't accept, like you were saying, that it's okay to feel bad now. Maybe I'm not feeling great today, or this is difficult. But when we accept that, then we have that to deal with. But if we compound that, if we feel further, gee, I shouldn't be feeling this way. And we set up these demands upon ourselves that I should or I must not be feeling this, then we're going to feel worse and we're going to have anxiety or stress about the anxiety or stress. So it really is important to say that. Um, also, you know, we, we as people, we're, we're wired to, um, to be connected to others. We're social animals. And so being cooped up in a house is not great for us. And so we really have to go deep in our reservoir and say, you know, what have I done in the past that's worked for me? How, you know, what successes, what are my resiliencies where I feel like I've come out on top when I didn't think I could, and I've done really well. That could be in sports and in, in life and relationships, because we've all had those times. So it's real important to, to dig in deep and say, you know, what are my strengths? What are my resiliencies? The breathing is certainly very important that will affect our heart rhythms and that sends messages to our brain how we're doing and how we're feeling and we so we do have conscious control a lot of this anxiety that we're feeling is that we don't feel we have really control about this and there's all you know new news all the time you know and if we're choosing to sit in front of the tv and get all this news our head is swimming and that will have an effect on us you know mentally and physically so we have to go away from that and just look for what updates we need at a certain time that structure, which was mentioned, is real important. What activities can we have? Can we write something down that's bothering us? Have a worry time. Maybe say, okay, okay, you know what? I'm prone to worry, and this is increasing it more. Okay, I'm going to spend a few minutes at this time of day. I'm going to worry, and then I'm going to not do it during this time. Maybe I'll write it down on a piece of paper 
and just lock it up or put it in another room in the closet and say, that's not a part of me now. I don't need to deal with this. So there's, um, you know, a lot going on. You know, one of the things is what we do say to ourselves matters so much. So we can, you know, cause ourselves to be stressed and anxious. We can, we can help ourselves be comfortable. And, um, you know, and that self-talk really is important because it can lead to negative thinking, negative automatic thoughts where we can feel depressed. And um, we can, you know, challenge those ideas and, and, you know, feel better. Let me just see if I could just bring something up here. Interesting. That I just came across the other day. I'm going to try and see if this works here to share this. Can you see that or not? Nope. Nope. Okay. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can figure this out. Yes, not. Hold on. Give me one more minute here. No, I lost it. Oh, never mind. I was going to show. Um, sorry, I lost it. It's not up here. Yeah. I, what I was going to show is some brain activity. When we get anxious, um, uh -huh. we can see a lot of fast activity in our brain called beta. And when it's going at a higher speed, we're going to have a lot of internal chatter. It's almost like that image of, you know, those things, those snow globes. You know, if you shake it, you see all the snow all over. That's like when we get in an anxious state and have some negative self-talk, we can go into that where it's just kind of the thoughts are just going all over the place and scattered. So we need to, you know, do our relaxation kinds of techniques from the breathing to perhaps, you know, progressive muscle relaxation to positive self-talk and exercise and eat well and sleep to really keep our brains and our mental attitude as good in control as we can. I just want to say uh, there are some people watching us. Uh, Hubert Mean, uh, Patrick Schma Schmidt, Steve Banks, Karin Der Sein, Malhi, Claudia Pesa Pensado, Silverio Porras, and Gabriel Gonzalez. I just want to say hi to them. And there's a question Carlos Sastre, has someone thought what will happen? when everything starts to normalize? Do you think people will have new, any phobias when they return to their routine? How to deal with this process when everything starts reestablishing? It's a good question for a clinical sports psychologist like Javier or, or Silverman. Okay, I want to try to, to say something uh, about this. Okay, when we are going to be coming back uh, to the normal situation, to the normal life, to the, our normal daily routine, first of all, what we have to do is try to be very calm because uh, we have to start uh, coming back to our daily routine in a very, very, very small steps, little by little. And I think this is what the government is going to try to do because maybe now they, they are a little bit afraid with the problem that maybe the number of people who is... Uh, uh, with the, this uh, coronavirus disease, they can maybe, if we start doing everything again very quickly, maybe the number of people who is under the coronavirus disease is going to come back again. So we have to be very calm, going step by step and try to uh, um, start our new normal life, but very, very, very slowly. That's the first thing I would like to say. But uh, I think the, this uh, man was also asking about something like if the people is going to be like a threat, maybe of the situation uh, could repeat in the future. I think this is a, a feeling or a thought that all of us are going to have during the future. Maybe now we're going to be prepared and we're going to be uh, with the prediction that this maybe could happen again in the future. So uh, it shows that this, this situation could be like a, a knowledge for us. We are learning about the situation. We are now preparing for a new situation. And now in the future, we are going to be prepared. But it's true that people nowadays is going to be like much more prudent and people is going to be like much more prudent with some uh, manners or some uh, actions as they do, because maybe at the beginning they are going to be afraid. But we have to take this like a uh, knowledge and we have to take this uh, as a process in which we are learning something new. And so we can be reinforced about this also as well. If uh, the Dr. Sampo can continue with the question, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, that, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, that all makes sense. Um, you know, I, I worry about um, some of the people who have conditions right now, like obsessive compulsive disorder, or depression, anxiety, because this could be hitting them harder. And it's important for these people to, to know that 
and to establish their baseline as much as they can and deal with this and, and seek out professionals and, and friends and relatives and spouse, et cetera. So for example, we're told to wash our hands for 20 seconds, okay? Um, somebody who may have OCD has been routinely doing that in quite a bit longer. <laughs> so they wanna make sure that, that they're not gonna overdo this now. So this could be affecting people um, who have certain conditions and they're gonna have to deal with this, you know, right at the present time. But, you know, we are learning to, to deal with these things. So hopefully we'll all, you know, we'll all come out better and learn that we've, you know, been able to, you know, have resiliencies and deal with things and, and you know, understand that, you know, these things will happen again, we'll have to check it, but we'll be grateful for what we have at that point. That's it. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I would like to recap what it's uh, what a person that is at home that is a little anxious by himself or with the family should do. I think we're uh, getting close to the to the to wrap this show, and I would like a, a little recap from each of you. What will be the simple steps? everyone should follow mentally to keep his life in order and avoid anxiety. Who wants to go first? Santiago, Santiago, a good question for you. <laughs> um, well, I think that uh, people should worry uh, to be very realistic. Realistic is uh, based on what is uh, happening in their environment, close environment. Okay, so uh, just take care of uh, the main and basic and very well known um, advices to keep safe. Okay, follow these instructions, but uh, try not to get obsessed. Just uh, Try to keep a life at home as with the more if in the more regular way that they can. Okay, try not to get obsessed and uh, ask for help. This is also an important advice: ask for help and ask for advice because um, we can learn from a meeting like this, a listening. But uh, consulta consulting and uh, uh, with regularity is uh, very, very important to, to face uh, like big issues in life. And people, is, they will probably face issues right now. And it's okay to ask for help. Okay? Many times it's not easy. So we, need, we all need help uh, and support from others. Thank you. Next, anyone uh, wants to add something? I would like, I would I like would... To, to just uh, congratulate the panel. Uh, it's always informative and to be able to get this sort of uh, information that helps us to control our mental health is very, very important. Uh, you are experts in the, in the field and I have benefited from your advice. And what I can say uh, with everyone is just to share how important it is to control your mind. News, messages, phone calls that create anxiety, keep them away. Uh, it's very simple to do. It is very simple also to engage and, and to be anxious and to be worried because that's what everybody's talking about. And you wanna call your friend and, and and hear how miserable he is and, and you share how miserable you are. But that's not the case. We have to be grateful. There's so many uh, thousands of people that have much worry and much worse scenario than we have. Staying at home, working uh, with food, with the opportunity to make changes, to influence others. That's a blessing. So. I thank you very much for, for this panel and what I take, I have been uh, benefiting very much from your advice. 
and it's always very nice to see you. I'm looking forward to seeing you in person uh, in the very near future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you. I, I just want to share some of the key words that uh, there were saying in this panel. The first uh, word is to stay home and stay safe. We have to stay home. Uh, another key word is adaptate, adaptate to the situation, assimilate the situation, accept the situation and feel well, feel good in the situation. We cannot change that. So let's keep working our minds. Let's keep connecting every day to these WBC talks and stay home and stay safe. Thank you very much for the panel. Victor, Mauricio, thank you very much. And I also want to remind that uh, today, April 6, is the day of peace and sports, uh, sports for peace and development. The white card, Mauricio, you wanted to add something? Your microphone. Thank you. Don't, don't get angry at me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is what happens when you are isolated. You, your voices become stronger and you're sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, April 6th is a day uh, for the International Day for Peace and Sports and Development. The WBC has been uh, participating with this uh, uh, um, great innovation, great uh, proposal. Uh, the Prince of Monaco uh, came with this concept and the United Nations ratified it. So. We have uh, so many athletes from around the world showing a white card, and that is the sign of peace in sports. And it's perfect at this time. Uh, we have had uh, many champions uh, post their white card, and it is basically a reminder on how important sports is for the daily uh, health of the world. Through sports, any sports, especially uh, for us to talk about boxing, it is certain that any fighter who is in the ring or in the gym is a potential uh, criminal in the streets, out of the streets. Uh, so the sports, they combat uh, addictions, they combat, um, my English, I don't know what happened today. Addictions, uh, obesity and crim criminal criminal activity. Through sports, you change the world. So basically we join and celebrate uh, April 6th as the International Day for Sports and Peace. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I wanna thank Sochi. I wanna thank Joaquin, Mayra, Javier, Santiago, and Dr. Silverman. Thanks for all your advice, I think, the, the big idea here is to be aware that we can have bad moments and we can change that. Just as you said, social uh, resetting our mind. We can take a few seconds of a minute to change that and think positive and stay positive. And we can be, as you said, the light or darkness. It, it's good to be the light. Thank you for bringing the light to us. And I want to thank everybody. Uh, this is the WBC round 11. Thanks, Mauricio. And uh, join us tomorrow for the round number 12. We're going to have promoters, the biggest name in the boxing, in the boxing business. It's going to be great, Mauricio. It's going to be spectacular. We're going to have Spanish, as usual, at 11. Uh, of course, Beltrán, Pepe Gómez, Kikle, uh, Salvatore Kerki. And then at 1 p.m. in English, we're going to have uh, Eric Gómez, Eddie Hearn, Tom Loeffler, Tom Brown, uh, Lou Di Bella. Uh, it's going to be spectacular. Carl Moretti. It's going to be a very fun panel tomorrow. Nice. Thanks, everybody. Joaquin, you want to say something? Yeah, that um, the conclusion is a new situation with new challenges, new strategies, and we need to be strong, very strong to and learn for the future. 
um, to to get uh, um, the, the the people the, the people are extraordinary and unable to get the, almost everything. Uh, sometimes the best, sometimes the worst. But uh, I think that the people uh, will be past this moment and learn. And in the future, we will be more strong than now. Thank you very much and help for, for us. Thank you, Joaquin. Mayra, you want to say something? Well, thank you very much for having me and everyone stay home and stay safe. Thanks, Dr. Silverman. Yes, I really enjoy being a part of this. I think everybody's idea was great and we'll all get through this. It'll work out great. Thank you, Dr. Santiago. Well, thanks uh, for letting me participate and also uh, keep safe and keep calm. Thanks, Javier. Okay, just saying thank you very much for letting me to participate in that uh, initiative and just hoping that this is going to finish as soon as possible. And I'm pretty sure that we're going to finish the situation being reforestated and being stronger than we are now. Thank you very much, Sochi. Just to stay home, stay safe, and see you tomorrow at round number 12. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, and keep watching tomorrow, round 12. Promoters, it's going to be great. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.